All right, everyone. Today we're going to be learning about inclined planes. Many times students have a hard time with these kind of problems, but I'm going to show some tips to make this a little bit easier, in my opinion. All right, so let's look into all of this. First, uh, we're looking at this diagram here. Assume there's negligible friction. What is the acceleration for the block above? So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw all the forces acting, acting on this. So we have a, remember, force of gravity always acts from the center and pulls straight down. Force of gravity. And then there's going to be a normal force going up like this. And actually, those are the only two forces. If there's no friction, those are the only forces acting on this block. So what I like to do all the time whenever we have inclined plane problems is to actually rotate this inclined plane so it looks like it's as if it's on a flat surface. So I'm going to be putting this on a flat surface like this. And then what I'm going to have it look like is force of force normal is going to look something like this. And force of gravity, which is coming from the middle, since it's rotated, is going to look something like this. I know it's a little bit strange, but this makes it a little bit more obvious um, where everything is. Okay, so this is what I personally like to do. You don't have to do it, but you can. And then at this point, uh, let's start writing some things. So we know the weight of this is 10 newtons. So this is going to be equal to 10 newtons. And what we also should know is that this is going to slide from the right when we look at this rotated position. So there's going to be a force of gravity of what we call in the y direction and a force of gravity in the x direction. Okay, uh, This would be the y and then this would be the x. So now let's figure out what this for. Uh, another thing that we should know is, oh, we should figure out what this angle is right here. So I'm going to do tan inverse is equal to opposite 3 over 4 adjacent. And then we get the angle 3 divided by 4 is equal to 36.87. 36.87 degrees. Uh, and now that we know that, we should also know that the same angle here, geometrically, is the same angle right here. So this is going to be equal to 36.87 degrees. Now that we have that, we can figure out what, what this force of gravity in the x is. I'm going to do 10 times sine of 36.87, and I get 6. So this is going to be 6 newtons. And the force of gravity in the y is going to be 10 times uh, cosine of 36.87, and we get 8. All right, so and that should make sense because as this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, this is going to be uh, just times 2 of that, so 6, 8, 10 triangle, okay? Now what we should know is it's going to be accelerating in this x direction, so that's the way it's accelerating. It's not going to be accelerating in this y direction at all because the surface is there. So we're going to look at everything in the x. Sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in x. We only have one force in the x, force of gravity in the x, equals mass times acceleration to x. Force of gravity in x is 6. Mass of the box, is, since it's 10 newtons, we know the mass is going to be 1 kilogram, because 1 times 10 is 10. And then acceleration. Acceleration is equal to 6 meters per second squared. Okay. What is the normal force? So we should know normal force is in the y direction. Acceleration to y. And we have two forces in the y. We have normal force. And we have force of gravity in the y direction. And mass of the box times acceleration of the box in the y. Force normal, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is going down 8. Mass of the box is 1. Acceleration in the y. We should know it's not moving in the y direction. It's only moving the x. So that means acceleration is 0. And then what we can find is the normal force is equal to 8 newtons. You should know that it's not the same as the force of gravity. It's not equal to 10, okay? It's less than that on an incline, right? So I hope that made sense. I'm going to move on. Okay, a 4 kilogram block slides down an incline at constant speed from the diagram above. Find the coefficient of friction for the block and the incline above. So what we're looking for is mu. We should know again there's going to be a force of gravity going down. There's going to be a normal force going up. 
and there's going to be a force of friction uh, trying to slow it down from moving. Again, what I like to do is I like to flip this whole thing around so it's on a leveled plane. So then everything is uh, everything is rotated. So force of gravity is going to be rotated like this. Force normal is going to be rotated like this. It's perpendicular, so it's always just going to be straight uh, up from the uh, from the surface. And then force of friction is going to be like this. Okay, force of gravity we know is forty newtons, and I guess that's all we know. But like I said, whenever we have an angle, I personally like to find what the components of everything is. So I would highly suggest you find what the force of gravity in the Y is equal to and the force of gravity in the X. Again, we know this angle here, 30 degrees, is the same as that angle geometrically. So we should know this is 30 degrees. So for 40 times sine of 30 degrees, that's going to be 20 newtons. And I'm going to have to use my other calculator for that. 40 times cosine of 30 is going to be 34.6. 34.6. What we should also know is this normal force is going to be equal to the force of gravity in the y since it's not moving in this y direction. So this is going to be equal to each other. Whoopsies, 34.6. And with that, I think we... Oh, it's moving down with constant speed. Okay. So what we should also know is since it's moving down this incline with constant speed, that means the forces in the x direction are going to cancel out. So this is going to be, uh, since it's getting pulled to the right 20 newtons by gravity, this force of friction is also 20 newtons because they cancel out because it's moving with constant velocity, meaning acceleration is zero. All right, knowing all that, let's see if we can solve, try to solve this. Force of friction is equal to mu times force normal. Force of friction is 20. Uh, mu is what we're looking for, the coefficient of friction. Normal force is equal to 34.6. And now let's see if we can find mu. 20 divided by 34.6, and we get 0 0.58. 0 0.58. B. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. A sled is sliding down a, a hill with constant velocity. The sled and the hill has a coefficient of friction of mu k. Find the angle in terms of w, the weight, and mu k. So, okay. This is going to get a little bit more tricky because we only have symbols here. But it should be fine. Let's just try to draw everything. So, force of gravity going straight down. Whoops. Then we have normal force, perpendicular, and then the force of friction. Again, my recommendation to simplify things is to rotate it all. I'm just going to draw as a block. Force of gravity is going to look like this. Force normal and force of friction. Okay, what are we looking for? So somehow we're trying to find what this angle is. Okay, mm, this is going to be tough. Oh, so they're saying find the angle in terms of the weight. So instead of force of gravity, I'm actually just going to put weight because those two are the same exact thing. Weight. And weight. Okay, so what I should know... And let me use a different color now. Pointer options. So what I should know is this weight. Uh, we can find maybe the angle of this. So we know this angle. And that's what we're looking for right here. This side is going to be weight times cosine of theta. And this side over here is going to be weight times sine of theta. We also know that this is going to be weight times, uh, ooh, not sine, cosine of theta. Mm -mm -mm. And we know this force of friction is going to be equal to weight times uh, cosine of theta. So this is representative of the normal force times mu k. 
It says that a sled is sliding down a hill with constant velocity. So what that also means is we know force of friction is equal to W cosine of theta times mu K, but we also know that uh, force of friction is equal to W times sine of theta. So force of friction is going to be equal to the uh, weight in the x direction. So it's this and this are going to be equal to each other since they're sliding down the hill uh, at a constant velocity and acceleration is equal to zero. So let's see if we can simplify things. So we have weight times cosine of theta times mu k is equal to weight times sine of theta. One thing we can do is the weight cancels out. And then what we can do is we can do doo -doo 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 -doo. We can do cosine, oh, if we bring this over to the other side, we can do mu k is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. And another thing we should know at this point is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta is equal to tan of theta. So we can say mu k is equal to tan of theta, or we can say tan inverse of mu k is equal to theta, okay? I know that was a bit complicated, but it wanted everything in terms of weight and mu k, and that's where we got it. We got the angle in terms of those things. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next time we'll be learning about tension. I hope that all made sense.